All right, today I have the Image Master 4000 Pro from Intelligent Computer Systems. This device is used for cloning and erasing batches of hard drives. It has the ability to erase eight SAS drives simultaneously. It can also erase serial ATA drives because they're interchangeable. This particular unit also comes with a few eSATA ports. There's a couple on the back too, and some USB ports. So what this does is it lets you use a nice little touch interface to either clone drives or wipe drives and you can do it all at once on too many drives at once and it's used mostly for companies that are say installing windows images onto many drives at once this particular one is in very poor shape it's got this weird fake leather piece which i think is actually an esd mat that they cut up now that i'm looking at it but it's all gungy many of the screws on this were stripped and from what I can tell, the reason for that is that whoever did the recycling for this, because this was recycled at a electronics recycling company, they have to remove the internal drive. And when they did that, they just gouged out all the screws and then like ripped the case open. So a lot of the connections were actually disconnected. One or maybe two cables were actually ripped off the board. And most importantly, the hard drive was removed, which kind of sucks. So that means we can't actually fire up the software and take a look at it. I did power this on. It makes a lot of noise and pulls 70 watts. And if you look really carefully, you can see the screen flickering. So I'm not sure if something's just disconnected or if there's actually something wrong with it. I mostly just wanted to see what was inside it. And as we'll see, I had reason to because it looks like there's at least some reasonably valuable parts in it. The plate on the top is actually removable. I'm not 100% sure why. This, I believe, is completely a dumb board. I don't think there's actually any active circuitry in it, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. There's an extra connection right here. I don't know what that's for. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's hooked up. We'll have to take a look. I think there's a big PCB at the top here that we'll have to pull off. This is the main thing that drove my interest in this, is the fact that there's an Intel inside Core i5 sticker and a G-Skill sticker, which you don't often see on the side of things. So, from these two stickers, I knew that there was at least a second generation Core i5 in here. And I could also tell that it was most likely a consumer board, seeing as G-Skill, as far as I know, does not make ECC memory. So you can kind of use these to infer what's inside the case. This is the complete model number and everything for it. All right, it's really a pain in the ass to shoot back here because of all the reflective metal. Under the glare, you can see there's a power button. This is a Flex ATX power supply. It's also the same type they use in a 1U rack. We can see the motherboard back here, which, hey, look, it's a consumer board. There's, <laughs> there's sound, there's Ethernet, the USB 3, all these usual things. Just as a side note, have you ever seen it where there's a freaking SP diff connection far away from the sound? I've never actually seen them have to run the connection that far away. If you can see that there's the E-Serial ATA connections. There's a video card, which seems odd at first glance when you see that there's video ports because it's an i5. And there's some kind of weird external interface. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little SAS logo here. So I knew right away that that was a, a either a rate control or, or an HBA card. So, you know, that's how they're interfacing to all these drives. I've opened up other ones like this in the past where they used like a custom board and FPGAs to talk to all the drives. This are clearly just using an off the shelf RAID controller or hard drive controller. So as I said, most of the screws were stripped. So I've drilled out pretty much everything. That's why the case isn't even together. But on the inside, we can see that it's actually pretty much just a standard computer crammed in with a whole bunch of extra cables and a couple other smaller boards. On the bottom half, there's space for the internal hard drive. I assume it was a hard drive. I doubt it was a solid state drive. There's a small controller board here. This is a connector that's ripped off that runs to the top side, which is that external power connector at the front. I assume it just provides 12 and five volts. I don't know why they need a fancy controller board other than the fact that they probably want to control it, but it's, it's weird that there's a lattice looks like a CPLD there. Not really sure what they're interfacing to because it is hooked up to USB. So I, I don't know, as far as I can tell, it's just a hard drive connector, but maybe it's kind of a smart connector in some way. Don't know. 
standard motherboard. It's a Gigabyte GAZ68MAD2HB3. Uh, it's a standard LGA1155 socket motherboard. The reason why I knew ahead of time that it was for second gen is that the logo styles change on the sticker. So you can actually look it up. You can see which, uh, you know, Haswell and so forth have different logos. Pretty much all the serial ATA ports are used on this and they're all just running off to the various eSATA ports. So they're making use of the onboard ports. In addition to the ports connected to this LSI SAS controller, there's a small video card and then this kind of jury-rigged cable with a bunch of electrical tape on it, which we'll get to. Power button just runs along the board and just sticks into the standard power connector on the motherboard. And in fact, it does have G-Skill memory, standard Intel stock cooler, probably why it was so freaking loud, aside from the fact that it's got a big 1U power supply in it, which are generally pretty loud. The design of this thing is kind of weird in that it's got high-end stuff. And you know, it's obviously an expensive device. It's got a fancy custom board and stuff, but they're using consumer hardware. They're using proper glue on everything, but then they have this stupid connector here, which yeah. And when we get to the display, you'll see how crazy it gets. The power supply is from Sparkle Power. They make very good power supplies. This is one of the few 1U power supplies I've ever actually owned that has a proper 80 plus certification, albeit only bronze. And this particular unit is 460 watts, which I think is mostly just because of the number of hard drives. The actual draw of all the electronics in here seems to be about 70. They're probably just concerned that you're plugging in a whole bunch of 15,000 RPM drives. So yeah, that could pull a lot of power. To power all the stuff at the top, they're using two standard PCI Express power connectors and three Molex connectors to power the interface board on the top that powers all the drives. One of the Molex power connectors runs off to the LCD though. Like I said, the motherboard is just a standard consumer motherboard. This particular one's made by Gigabyte. The Intel stock cooler should come right off. DDR3-1600, and it's only two gigs each. Lame. Looks like it's an i5-2500. Not too bad. They're at least somewhat sellable. So this weird port on the back, turns out it's actually a PCI Express extension card. I believe this interfaces to the, just a uh, weird Molex expansion cable that can either be four, eight, or 16X PCI Express. I don't have any of the cables and I don't have anything to connect it to. So it's not very useful. And most of the pictures I've seen of these things have active circuitry on the board. So this might be specific to either short distances or low speed, I'm not sure. My understanding is that this is used to interface to another unit that is just designed to give it more hard drive ports. So I'm not sure what's in it other than a power supply and possibly another just serial ATA card or SAS card and that's it. So not too sure on this one. I don't have the other parts to make it work. The video card is a Zotac 1X PCI Express card. The GT218 ION with half a gig of memory and it's just DDR3. I believe it's basically a GT210 chipset and not very powerful but it provides video output. That's pretty much all you need in this thing. Uh, HDMI and DVI, although they were using an internal uh, connector. This connector is a VGA connector, but on many video cards, what they do is they have a full height bracket, and the full height bracket has a little external connector to the VGA. They're just taking that off and running it to their uh, internal LCD using this basic cable that just takes the internal connector, converts it to a VGA connector, and then you get a VGA output on that end. Unfortunately, the SAS card on this is near useless. It's an LSI SAS3081E-R, and it's basically useless because it doesn't support drives over two terabytes. Yay. And it's also a three gigabit interface, which isn't a big deal for hard drives, but this one does have a whole bunch of LEDs on it. So I guess that's like positive. As a side note, not too long ago, I actually went out of my way to find a 1X PCI video card because many server motherboards don't have 16x slots so when i was working on my super micro boards a long time ago i ran into the problem of i didn't have any video cards that would work in it so i did track down a card i 
can't remember where I had. I think I've gotten a drawer somewhere. I haven't used it in a while. It's quite hard to find 1X cards that just are just 1X out of the box and you don't need an adapter for. This one is pretty convenient because it has modern connections and it's also uh, pretty small and it doesn't need an external power connector. After taking out a ton of screws, there's not much in this at all. It's all just individual little boards with just two serial attached SCSI connectors, a male and a female. Real exciting. I guess it's useful if you need to inch your SAS connection over by an inch. This thing is just completely packed with cables. So I've taken out the top board that has all the SAS connectors. The front panel connectors are here. They have the USB and, and e serial ATA connections. There's a fan here. It's made by someone ever cool. Yep, it's a long life fan. I don't think this is what's making all the noise in this thing. It's gotta be the Intel stock cooler and that one new power supply. So there's USB connections that run off to the upper board, and there's also a connection that runs off to the touch controller on the LCD, which we're gonna take a look at. But other than that, it's just a metal chassis with a whole bunch of cables running around it. So this is the LCD. It uses an Intellux panel that's 800 by 480 pixels. There's also this uh, four wire resistive touch controller that uh, just connects with the USB connection to the main board. This looks like it's just a standard LCD controller that you can just find on eBay. It looks like it's just a universal one because they've got all the different connections for the flat panel and there's simply a set of buttons for controls. This is what would normally be on the front panel for your LCD, but uh, yeah, they've just double-sided taped it. So yeah, this is just an off-the-shelf module. And that's about it. I mean, it's just a, just a touch controller. I'm gonna try and power this up later, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work. So this is the main custom board. It essentially is just a lattice CPLD with a USB connection and a little USB controller and a whole bunch of power supplies. It looks like they're just using this board to control power to the individual drives. There's a whole bunch of ADCs on this, so they're probably reading back voltages and possibly power draw. There might be some power limiting systems in place, but it uses two Molex connections and two PCI Express connections. There's also this funky little connection, so it's probably just whatever they're using that specific product. I've never seen this style of connector before. I mean, it looks like it's just like a standard IDC connector, but it's got these uh, little metal clasps on it. There's the uh, Lattice Mach XO. So yeah, it's a kind of busy board, but there's not really that much on it. It looks like it's mostly just power supply. So I did hook this up to my computer and Windows 10 immediately identified it as a touch controller and it loaded up and it works perfectly. Well, kind of perfectly because the display isn't actually on. You're using it like a drawing tablet and it's all absolute positioning, so it's a little weird, but it does actually work. You just kind of have to estimate where the pointer will be when you touch it. Connector on this is actually quite interesting. It's a solid metal cover, which uh, just comes off with a couple screws. And then on the inside, it's kind of like a modified M.2 connector. It's pretty interesting, very similar to an M.2 drive. Obviously not the same thing, but you can see all the differential pairs running off. Something's not quite right with this motherboard. At first I thought the fan wasn't working because it would just attempt to spin. And then I realized that the whole motherboard just is weird. Like it wouldn't work at first. And then once I finally got it started up, even with the fan spinning, the CPU got really hot and it was running really slowly. Almost like it was putting in way too much voltage to the CPU and it was just overheating. So I'll have to look into that. It could just be something as simple as a BIOS reset. Unfortunately, we couldn't really try it out without the proper software. So this was just mostly uh, taking a look at the hardware and unfortunately the, uh, the software will go a mystery because they ripped out that damn drive. At least on this particular one, I can sell some of the parts, such as the motherboard and the CPU, since I don't particularly need them right now. I get the feeling that he wants food, but I'm not quite sure if that's the case. Moose, you want food? That it? Moose.